Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Let's Learn This Together, and this is going to be the final project that we make in this playlist, which you will be able to find and download to dissect at your own pace in the description down below. So we're going to make a beautiful inventory that has descriptions of items, drag and drop functionality, items that can and cannot stack, and locked size inventory. We can click on one to bring up a beautiful description with a flashy animation, and then we can click on the item to actually activate a script. We will also have sorting capabilities inside of this inventory, and then you can exit that and leave the menu. All of that is going to be in this entire series. In this video in particular, we're going to cover the creation of the inventory using enums and a DS grid. And we're going to start talking about the first script we'll write, which is add item to master list. If you want to follow along, I encourage you to download the start here project, which has all of the items, none of the code, just the items and sprites that we're going to be using to save time so you can just start following me and by the end hopefully you will understand exactly how to make your own inventory as I explain why I choose what I do and how to do it so that you can put this into whatever game project you're working on. Stick to the end for details on the giveaway of my beginner games course. Alright, let's go ahead and dive right in. First thing we're going to do is create another object and or create an object. And I'm going to right click and if you're in 2.3, then you can add objects to anywhere on the asset browser, which is pretty cool. It just takes a second longer to actually find what I'm looking for. I'm going to call this OBJ items. And what this is going to be is our master item list. So this is going to have every single item we can have inside of the game. It's also going to have all the properties we can have for items. So I'm going to add a create event in here. I'm going to go and full screen this so we can go to work. So this is going to be our master item object. And inside here, we talked about what all items already have. So we're going to go ahead and create that inside of code. So all item properties. The way we're going to be doing it is by using an enum. And we're going to just call this item. If you're not familiar with enums, then go ahead and research that. But for the most part, it's just a way of listing things out with typed numbers. So I'm going to type in something here called like name. And when I access this later, if I were to say item dot name, I can do that with this kind of typing instead of having to do it as a string or just put in a number because every enum is just a number. So this is zero. That's what the first one is, and then the next one is going to be one, and so on and so forth. We're going to be using these to add things into arrays and DS grids, and so it just makes a lot more sense to use it as an enum. That way we don't have to remember every single number of inside of like where the DS grid and which one the name is, which one the sprite is, and so on. So the item is going to have a name, sprite, amount, a type, a price, the object associated with it. And the last one is actually just going to be for how many properties there are. So name starts at zero, height will be the last number. And whenever we're creating things, we start at zero, but the enums, like the, when we create a DS grid, it kind of starts counting at one. So we just max it off at the height here. And that way we just always know how many properties we have. Because if you wanted to add in more properties, if you had them, you just put them underneath the height, and then you'll always have the correct height in your DS grid and arrays, which is pretty cool. Are you ready to start making the game of your dreams? Then head on over to letslearnthistogether.com to check out my trilogy of courses to take you from beginner to expert. Game development is hard and frustrating when you're going at it alone and you don't have anyone to turn to. Join me on the journey and I'll be with you every step of the way to alleviate all of that frustration. And by the end, you'll be ready to make any game you can set your mind to. Go ahead and get started now at letslearnthistogether.com. Okay, we're going to add another enum here called type. So in this inventory, we're going to have three kinds. We're going to have weapon, armor, and consumable. Your game will probably have more, like quest items or something else. I don't know. There's an unlimited amount that you can do. But we're just going to stick with the basic three. We're going to be able to sort these and have different messages pop up, depending on if it's wearable or if it's consumable. So... I'll show you how to do all of that as well. Then we're also going to have consumables that can cure certain ailments. So an ailment is a bad thing, such as being 
poisoned, or if you're confused, or maybe you're drunk. Maybe being poisoned and drunk are actually the same thing. Well, they are the same thing, but for this, we'll say that they are different. Enum sort type. This is gonna be used when we sort our inventory. So we're gonna be able to sort it by several different ways. Name, amount, type, price, and then same thing here, we're gonna have a height variable. So when we are sorting, we're just going to actually be able to say, sort it by whichever one it is, plus one. So it'll go from name, to amount, to type, to price. We'll check if we've reached the height, and if so, then we'll go right back to name. You can add in specific kinds of sorting if you wanted to be able to sort by name, and then they wanted to sort by price or something. That would also be very simple. I'm just gonna make it so you can sort by these and it just cycles through them. I'm gonna press enter a couple times to put this in the middle. And I'm gonna paste this in. So our DS grid is essentially a 2D array. Now in 2.3, since they've updated it, there are no actual 2D arrays, like it's all 1D arrays inside of 1D arrays, but a DS grid is still going to be a 2D array. And this is how it's gonna look. So we have the X coordinates, which is this one here. So zero is going to be an item. So, and then we have another item over here, and then the Y coordinates are gonna be the actual properties that we set up in the enum item. So for the first item, it would be zero, zero would be the name, zero, one would be the sprite, and so on and so forth. That's how we're going to design the grid. Now you can easily design it the other way, but I'm not gonna do that simply because I've set it up this way. There's no real reason that I've done this besides I just needed to choose one and this is the way I'm used to imagining 2D arrays, so it's what I've done. So all of the properties, like the functions we use for DS width and height, if you change this around, just reverse those and you'll be good to go. All right, now we need to actually make the master item list. So I'm gonna say global dot all items equals DS grid create it's going to start with a width of zero because the width is how many items we have and we start with zero and the amount of properties or the height is going to be item dot height so there you go that's our all items list and so this is what we're going to put all of the master items in and check it against now i'm going to show you what it looks like when we add an item with a script but we're going to do that in the next video the reason for that is I want this series to be as searchable as possible. So this was designing an inventory in code. The next video is going to be adding items to an, a DS grid. So you'll be able to find that very easily. If you want early access to that, then go ahead and hop on my Patreon where you'll have access to the projects, the videos, and to me to ask any questions. So we're going to create a function called add item to master list. And Looks like GameMaker 2.3 actually keeps track of functions that you've created in the past, even when they're not in there. This beginner project doesn't have any scripts. It does not have this function, but I've used it before and apparently it remembers even if I deleted it, which is kind of interesting. So it's gonna look like this. We're going to add in an array of properties like we did. So the first one, that's why I have this up here to remind myself, is gonna be the name. So it's gonna be small knife. Then it's gonna be the sprite, which would be SPR knife. We already have that. The amount is gonna be one. The type is gonna be type dot weapon. Then the price, it can be any price you want. I'll put it at five. And the object is gonna be OBJ knife. We close that as an array, close it up. And then when we call this, it will add this to our DS grid of all items. And we're gonna do some checks inside of this function to make sure that what we're adding is appropriate. Because if we were to come in here and add in another one right here, we have no way of knowing that this is incorrect because we're just passing in an array. But when we actually get into this function, we're gonna make sure that we have the correct amount of properties and that everything else is the way it's supposed to be. Otherwise, we'll reject the item because if we tried to add it, then our game would crash. That's gonna come up in the next video.
On every Game Maker tutorial and video I put out from here into the future, I'm going to be giving away one copy of my beginner game developer course, a great way to go from no programming experience to be able to make your own games. To be entered to win, just like the video and leave a comment showing me your keyboard works. You can leave a comment about anything. A week after the video is posted, I will send you a message with the coupon. If you want, you can use it for yourself, give it to a friend, or apply it towards a more expensive course by just sending me an email and letting me know that's what you'd like to do. If you want to see more content from me, then subscribe and ring the bell to be notified every time I put out a new video. But that's all I've got for you. So thank you so much for joining me. And as I always say, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later. A huge thank you to all of the awesome people who support me over on Patreon. Their names are on the screen now, and every dollar pledged helps me create more awesome content. You can support me for as little as $1 a month and get access to exclusive perks like my Discord server, your name in the credits, early access to my YouTube videos and courses, and more. Check it out at patreon.com slash letslearnthistogether.com or find the link in the description below and become a patron today.